In this video, we're going to look at an overview of the Preview Toolpaths function in the software. This is one of the most powerful aspects in any Vectric program because it allows you to see the part you're going to cut before you actually cut it. Effectively, you're animating your toolpaths in a virtual piece of material and you're able to check for things like the finish quality, make sure that you haven't made any mistakes, ensure that the tool can fit into all the areas you expected it to, and a number of other things that you can check for visually to see that they're right. The benefit of this, of course, is that you don't waste time or material on cutting parts that are incorrect and you can make any changes you need to very quickly in the software before you go out to the machine. A side benefit of this is the fact that if you do see a problem in your final cut part on the machine, you can compare it back to the preview and if it doesn't show up in the preview then almost certainly you're looking at some kind of mechanical or electrical error that you have with your machine because the preview is so reliable. Let's get started by opening a new copy of the software. So to help us demonstrate the preview toolpaths function, let's open an existing file and we'll select Vectorphone Toolpaths from the project folder and hit open. And here you can see a set of vectors that were laid out in another tutorial. And if we click on the icon, we can switch over to the Toolpaths tab and see the toolpaths that have been created for this design as well. Now when we come to preview a toolpath, typically we're going to enter the preview mode after we've calculated the toolpath. So let's look at that first. If I take one of these toolpaths and edit it, then I can hit the calculate button and as is the default in the software, whenever a toolpath has been calculated, the software automatically opens the preview toolpath form as you can see at the top here and also puts us into the 3D view because that's where the previewing will take place. Now the other way that I can get into the preview toolpaths form without calculating a toolpath, if I just close and undraw the visibility there, is to click on the icon here, which is the first one on the last row of toolpath icons. So preview toolpaths, click on that and the same thing happens. I come into the preview toolpaths form and that also will automatically open the 3D view as well if I'm not uh, currently displaying it. There are two sections in the form. At the top we can adjust the appearance of the material and the tool and in the lower section we can actually control the preview itself. Below that we have access to the toolpath list and this is important because for different types of operation in the preview toolpath form we need to either be able to select a toolpath as I'm doing here or make the toolpath visible as I'm doing here with these checkboxes. We'll come back to that in a moment. To start with though, I just want to look at the top part of the form where we can adjust the appearance of how our part is going to look. At the top, I can choose the general appearance of my material. If I click on the arrow here, I get a drop down list and this list is populated by a set of images in a particular folder that the software looks in when it starts. So it's possible for you to add to these images with your own or to edit the ones that are there but that's covered in another tutorial video where we look at the application data folder. So if you're interested in doing that, please go ahead and look at that video. Here I'm just going to show you how we can select from the standard list. If we wanted to pick a different material, we can just choose that from the list there. And you can see that now is being used to shade our material. We'll just put the material into an ISO view. So we've got that list that's populated here with different woods, metals, stone and then miscellaneous at the bottom for plastic. In addition, at the very top, we have an option which isn't defined by an image and that's the ability to choose a solid colour. If I click on that, it activates this box below. I can click on the drop down arrow there and choose from different colours in my list. Or to get a larger selection of colours, I can click on more colours and we can choose from the options in here or click on the custom tab in order to really customise whatever colour I want to use that's available to me in the software. If I just cancel that box there, we'll come back up and click on the drop down and choose the steel bright option here to go back to the one that we were working with when we first opened it. When I'm happy with the general colour, then I could go ahead and preview a toolpath in that if I want. Now the colour of the area that we machine is going to be affected by the next section here under machined area colour. 
The first option, material color, will just use exactly the same color as the material. So if I just preview a toolpath here, we can see the result of that is just shaded with exactly the same material color as we're using for our overall block. Let's just reset that. The next option is a global fill color that allows me to choose a single color from the same color selector that you saw before. So if we pick one of these here, a dark green in this case, so preview, every single toolpath I cut will be filled with that single color using that option there. If I want to get more specific and actually color individual toolpaths with a different shade, then I'd use the last option here, toolpath color. And what that allows me to do is select a toolpath and pick the color from the list here. So maybe the first one I want to be dark green, but then I might choose the second toolpath here and choose a different color. Perhaps we'll go with a gold color. And if I say preview that, then you can see that's being shaded in with a different color there to create contrast. Now to help me, you'll notice that these little colored squares have appeared next to the tool icon for each of the toolpaths there, giving me an indication that a color I've selected for those for the preview. So very, very powerful function, the ability to select any individual toolpath, change the toolpath color there, and see that update after we've previewed the toolpath for that particular um, option. The last couple of options we have at the top here are the ability to animate the preview. What that does is rather than show you just the end result, which is what we've been seeing here, it actually shows you the progress as the software works through. So if I just check that box there, I'll reset the preview and preview that you can see that it's appearing in stages. In addition to that, we have the option to draw a wireframe of the tool as well. So again, I'll just reset that and preview it. And now you can see that there's actually an animation of the tool appearing there. Now, both times you saw that it was very, very quick. And I'm going to show you in a moment how we can slow this down and make that a little more clear. So that's all the options we have at the top for affecting the material color, the toolpath color, and whether we want to see the progress of the tool and actually see the tool itself as it progresses through the preview. Now let's look at controlling the preview in the next section here. So you've seen there, what I've been doing is just using the button here to preview the selected toolpath. Now it's important to understand the selected toolpath is whichever one we've last clicked on that is highlighted either with a blue box or sometimes just with the name in bold. So whichever one I've got selected there, when I click Preview Selected Toolpath, is the one that is going to be previewed in my 3D view. Now let's just go ahead and hit Reset there. Another option I've got when I'm previewing these is to adjust the speed if I've got the Animate turned on. So I could actually pull this down to make it much slower now if we come back to the pocket, so that's the selected toolpath, click preview selected toolpath, you can see that it's now animating that much, much slower than before. So I can see the progress of the tool working through my job. Now this can be very useful sometimes if I need to see maybe the order that something's cutting or to make sure that the tool is doing what I expect it to do when I cut. Of course, sometimes I just want to get this as quick as possible so we can just speed this up and the software will just work through faster and faster until we get to the fastest setting, which is pushing the slider all the way to the right. And as I mentioned before, if we have the animate switched off, then that will be even quicker and it will just show you the end result. It won't show you the progress. If we want even more control over how we interrogate the toolpath with the preview, we have these sort of video player style functions available to us as well. If I just reset the preview here, what I can do, if we just slow this down a little, is hit the play button and that will just start running through the preview. At any stage, I could pause that if I want and I then have the option to either step through individual steps in the toolpath, so that's literally like each individual coordinate, or to forward to the next retract. A retract is where the tool is going to pull out in order to move to a new position in the job. So if I just single step this, you can see that just cutting through the material, showing me where it's going to stop and move over and then cut to the next coordinate. So that's a very, very precise way for me to look at each individual move. There'd only be certain toolpaths where that would really be useful to me. 
Also then I have the ability to run to the retract so that just keeps going until the next time the tool would need to pull out and move to a new position in the job. So if I click that again I can see the next section that will be cut, click it again to see the next section that will be cut. At any stage using these then I can just hit stop in order to exit out of those and see the progress that I've made so far. This stage I can reset the preview and so again there you can see we've got lots and lots of control if we want to look at a particular type of toolpath in individual stages. Now I'm just going to push the speed all the way up to the top again here so we can do these as fast as possible. So the next option down on the form is the ability to preview all the toolpaths. What this will do is just work in list order through all the toolpaths we have. If I just click that button there you'll see it starts with the pocket then it will cut the text, then drill the holes and finally do the profile cutout. So that's a nice option if you just want to very quickly work through all the toolpaths and see what the finished result of your part will look like at the end of running them all. The next option is the ability to preview visible toolpaths. This is where it's important to understand the difference between a selected toolpath where we click on it and the visible toolpaths where we actually check the boxes. In some cases I may want to preview some of the toolpaths but not all of them. So if I just reset the preview here, perhaps what I would like to do is look at everything except the cutout, in which case an easy quick way for me to do it is to make these three toolpaths visible and then to click on the button preview visible toolpaths and that will just animate through any that I had the visibility box checked for. So it's previewed these three but not the last one because that was not visible. The next option on the form allows me to reset the preview and you've seen me use this a number of times already. By clicking on this it just resets me back to my original block of material. Now I'm ready to select any toolpaths I want and re-preview them or we could preview all the toolpaths into our block after that. That's particularly useful if you start to make edits to the toolpaths after you've calculated them so that you can see the result of the changes you're making. Another option we have is the ability to undo last. How this works is if I take the next toolpath here and preview it and then click on undo last it will just go back one operation so it doesn't go all the way back to the beginning it's just taking the last thing that I did and going back that one stage and I can do that at any time to just jump back um, one operation as I said. It's important to note that you won't have that ability once you've closed the preview toolpath form. It will no longer remember the stage you were at, so in that case you'd probably need to reset and start again. So let's just go ahead and preview the other two toolpaths here so we can get the part into its finished state. And at this point I may want to save a preview image so that I could send it to a customer for approval maybe. What this does is just take a snapshot of your 3D view when you click on the button here. So before you click on it you want to make sure that you've moved the view around and got it into an orientation that shows the part how you want to display it and then you can click on save preview image in the project folder you can just give it a name choose the image type that you want to use to save and then hit the save button and that's a file that you could attach to an email email to your customer and get approval for the finished part in this case we just hit cancel there you can see we're using tabs to hold the part in place so they're displayed and I'm not able to show what the part will look like after I've removed those tabs if I wanted to do that then what I would need to do is just come into the profile and I would just need to uncheck so I'm not adding tabs to the toolpath and recalculate it. Now I can re-preview that and the tabs will be cut away and when I have nothing connecting it to the outside material what I can do is double click on that in the 3D view and it will actually delete that for me. So now I could show an image of the part as it will look once it's complete. Of course I wouldn't want to run this toolpath if I was intending to actually use the tabs but from a visualization point of view it's useful to know that it's possible to do that. Again I'll just click save preview image and save that image as we see it there so I can send that to my customer. So now we've covered all the options that we have in the preview toolpath form but I'd like to load one example to just quickly show you how this ability to double click on the waste areas works not only for external waste as you saw then but also for internal pieces too. Let's just go ahead and close the preview toolpath form and we'll click on the icon here to switch back to the drawing tab 
and I'm just going to open the other file in the project folder here for the quatrefoil. Don't want to save the changes to that. I'm just going to come over to the um, toolpaths view and click on the preview toolpaths form. Now I can see I've got a whole load of toolpaths here if I switch on their visibility. If I just say preview all toolpaths, software is just going to animate that through for me. Now in this case I've got a number of different areas being cut out. So I've got my external area again as before, um, again with no tabs in this case so I can double click on that to remove it. But also these internal areas, as long as they're not connected by tabs, I can just double click on the material in those in order to remove those too. So I just wanted to show you that example so you can see how it's possible to do that both with external and internal areas as long as they're not connected to the original part. And at this stage that concludes our video overview of the preview toolpass function. It's very very important to really get good mastery of this because it's the best way you've got of seeing what the part will look like before you cut it. And as I said at the start of the video this really helps to save time and wasted material and money on cutting parts that aren't correct. Thanks for watching.